Welcome everybody to this new um, seminar of the IM uh, series on artificial intelligence and mathematics. I'm very pleased to have with us uh, Massimo Fornasier. Uh, I will briefly introduce him. The research of Massimo Fornasier embraces a broad spectrum of problems in mathematical modeling, analysis, and numerical analysis. Fornasier is particularly interested in the concept of compression as appearing in different forms in data analysis, image, and signal processing, and in the adaptive numerical solution of partial differential equations or high dimensional optimization problems. Fornasier received his doctoral degree in computational mathematics in 2003 from the University of Padua, Italy. After spending from 2003 to 2006 as a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Vienna and the University of Rome La Sapienza, he joined the Johan Radon Institute for Computational and Applied Mathematics of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, where he served as a senior research scientist until March uh, 2011. He was an associate researcher from 2006 to 2007 for the program in Applied and Computational Mathematics of Princeton University in USA. And in 2011, uh, Fornasier was appointed chair, appointed chair of Applied Numerical Analysis uh, at TUM. Uh, selected honors and awards are uh, uh, he, he was invited speaker to the european congress of mathematics in uh, 2016 european research Car council started grant uh, in 2012 biennial prize for the società italiana di matematica applicata in industriale simai first edition in um, 2012 start prize of the austrian science found uh, in 2011 and Best Paper Award of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in 2010. Uh, Prix de Bolpe, Bolpape, for, forgive me if I got it wrong, for image processing of the Royal Academy of Belgium in uh, 2009. Um, we welcome again uh, Massimo Fornasier. I will uh, uh, I remind the um, uh, listeners that the question can be asked on the youtube chat or if you want you can ask your question live at the end of the seminar uh, and the url and link uh, will be provided uh, during the, the seminar uh, thanks again and let's uh, give the word to massimo please thank you very much for the introduction and first of all for the invitation so i would like to thank all the uh, uh, group of uh, colleagues at iac and, and uh, cian and r in rome for um, the kind invitation so <clears throat> i'm uh, sharing uh, my screen and uh, with that uh, i'll try to start the talk Right, so I hope that uh, it, uh, it is actually visible on the screen, yeah. Okay, so the talk uh, of today is uh, about uh, consensus-based uh, optimization and I would uh, motivate uh, also uh, this uh, with uh, problems in machine learning uh, so that uh, it's also uh, correctly connected with the, with the, somehow the spirit uh, of this uh, series of, of talks. Um, so <clears throat> machine learning is, um, it's uh, about uh, parametric nonlinear algorithms. Typically, they, they are functions that are parametric, but they are expressed as iterative uh, algorithms. Those parameters are usually optimized uh, towards certain tasks like feature selections, uh, dimensionality reduction, clustering, classification regression, and uh, generation of data. And so, um, somehow, the uh, nonlinearity of the algorithm and the non-convexity of the data misfit that one wants to optimize in order to perform certain tasks, they usually end up in a training phase that is uh, a non-convex 
uh, optimization. Moreover, the large amount of parameters make it uh, this optimization high dimensional, and because of that, uh, typically quite hard. First order methods, so these are methods that are based, say, on uh, at most gradient uh, information about the, the objective function that one wants uh, to optimize, such as uh, stochastic gradient descent methods, are usually preferred because of the speed and scalability, and because they are considered generically able to escape at least the trap of subtle points, right? So the idea is that the iteration won't be uh, moving with respect to the exact gradient, but with respect to a stochastic um, estimate of it. And because of that, you may be able to escape um, critical points and, and being able to search for deeper optimal somehow um, in that sense. And in some cases, it's also possible to show that you can even compute global minimizers if the problem is, is sufficiently nice. However, the use of first order methods has some drawbacks and, and limitations. In particular, the objective functions are not necessarily differentiable. So some, sometimes uh, you don't dispose really of, of a proper gradient that you can use. Uh, sometimes there are phenomena of um, uh, explosion or vanishing of gradients along the, uh, the optimization problem. Uh, in general, there is no guarantee of global convergence, uh, um, and uh, some problems do like to, to be really solved by, by global uh, optimization rather than finding some good uh, local minimizer. So global convergence is not necessarily something that you may want to dismiss uh, all the time. And, uh, and for this, somehow, it remains very important. So the message that I would like to convey, there is a lot out there uh, which may not be reached because we focus uh, too much on first order methods. So there are some things that these first order methods cannot do, but um, it doesn't mean that we, we should not do it. Yeah. So. And, uh, and that's a bit uh, the spirit here. Now, uh, uh, long before the current trends in machine learning, uh, non-convex optimization have been considered in optimal design on, on any, any sort of processes, right? And as a matter of fact, the, the people working in practice, uh, like in designing, uh, uh, say, um, uh, uh, optimal shapes uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in certain problems in, uh, in uh, aerodynamics or even in, uh, somehow in, uh, in, uh, in car manufacturing and many other things. In all this area um, of optimizations, uh, people do not use first order methods. They use uh, way more sophisticated methods that uh, maybe uh, are based on, on, uh, on uh, complicated mechanisms that are really hard to analyze. So maybe th these methods are not so um, known or so, uh, uh, so uh, considered as so uh, interesting for mathematicians because they are difficult to analyze, but still they are having a tremendous impact in the practice. And this class of methods is called metaheuristics, and it's um, about orchestrating interactions between local improvements uh, and global strategies uh, that may combine random and deterministic decisions to really be able to find either the global maximum, minimum, or uh, global optimum, or uh, in general, a good optimum, um, uh, and, and, and so on. Now, the zoo of these kind of methods is pretty large. There is a, a, a variety of techniques started already in the 60s that maybe had uh, some of the most known uh, um, uh, instances in the simulating annealing or in genetic algorithms or in particles worm optimization. And uh, as I said, these uh, methods, uh, uh, they do uh, show tremendous empirical success. And some of them do possess some theoretical um, uh, analysis like simulating annealing. But uh, uh, for some of them, it's very difficult to perform 
a proper uh, analytic uh, guarantees of uh, global uh, success. And for this reason, somehow, um, these methods are a little bit ignored by the mathematical community. But uh, as a matter of fact, recently, um, there has been some work done by Pinot and others in 2017 that try to combine the ideas of simulated annealing and particle swarm optimization to design a new uh, optimization method that you may call consensus-based optimization that is derivative free, so it does not use any gradient information, is based on instantaneous stochastic and deterministic decisions, and in a certain sense is designed to be easily analyzed or to be more prone to a mathematical analysis. And it is based on a, on a mechanism of creating a consensus among particles that we may call uh, somehow optimizing agents on the location of the uh, global minimizer. So the, the fact that this method can be uh, analyzed comes with uh, the fact that it can be interpreted as a discretization in time of the solution of, this, of a system of stochastic differential equations was low or large particle limit may be approximated by a deterministic partial differential equation of mean field type. And eventually, one can use uh, classical tools of, of calculus to analyze the large time behavior of the PDE, okay, to show that the solution of the mean field model do converge to a, uh, say, Dirac delta in the near of a global uh, optimizer. So here is an example. As you see here, there is a function that is uh, characterized by uh, zillions of local minimizers that they won't be easily um, uh, somehow uh, um, overcome by a classical, um, a classical first order method. And there is a, a global minimizer far away from where the initial condition started. But nevertheless, these methods is made so that multiple particles are exploring partially randomly the, uh, the space. And as soon as one particle is able to sense the presence of the global minimizer, all of a sudden the entire group of particles start to coordinate and um, finding a consensus of where the global minimizer is. So this uh, result seems very uh, remarkable, right? So that uh, uh, such method can, can really find uh, the global minimizer. And let's see how, how it is really formulated. So now <clears throat> we are using a finite number of agents, right? So another or finite number of op optimizing agents or particles, uh, say V1 and Vn, and these are the positions of these uh, agents. And with that, we also create an ensemble, which is, a, if you want, an empirical measure representing uh, the probability distribution of these particles, that it's uh, supported, actually, on the position of these particles. And what we want is to optimize uh, a, a given uh, function. And uh, uh, the way we proceed is quite simple. We iterate uh, the following algorithm. We uh, basically move uh, one particle at a certain time by drifting this particle, by creating a drift of this particle towards a certain uh, value V alpha, a certain points V alpha. And these points V alpha, I will tell you in a moment what is that. At the same time, as soon as the particles are very far from this special particle V alpha, then they are moving also randomly uh, according to a, essentially a Brownian motion, okay? Now, what is exactly V alpha? Well, V alpha is a weighted center of mass of the particles. So the weighted center of mass of the particles, basically each particle is endowed by a mass, and this mass is essentially um, uh, uh, essentially large as soon as the particle is very close to a minimizer 
and it is actually very very small if the particle is very far from being a, a minimum point and it, therefore we endown each particle with, with this kind of mass we compute the center of mass of them and that's exactly what this v alpha uh, look like so in other words there is an interplay between drifting towards an instantaneous proxy to the global minimizer given by the current center of mass of the particles weighted by the essentially the reciprocal of the of the uh, optimization of the objective function that we want to minimize at the same time the particles are exploring randomly the space unless they are already reached consensus which means that if all the particles are very very close to this consensus point this v alpha then uh, somehow the this this the variance of the noise is is kind of vanishing and everything uh, in a certain sense stops right so this is the mechanism now yeah okay this is the algorithm that seems very simple and it's based on on n particles and the question is what this algorithm actually do because um yeah there is something weird so all these particles are uh, coupled by the fact that they have to move towards this instantaneous center of mass and it, it, it needs to be updated knowing the position of all the particles at the same time they wildly moving around in a sort of um, variable variable um, variable uh, uh, somehow brown motion. okay so let's do an experiment we pick three positions of three particles and we keep them fixed as initial conditions and we generate at random other particles around and then we run multiple multiple experiments with this algorithm we run multiple experiments with this algorithm and we track all the trajectories that the particles have been doing starting from these three particles of course there are other particles that have been moving around but we are ignoring them around we are simply looking at the, the trajectories of three of these particles starting always from the same points and these trajectories form certain clouds that you can see here right these beautiful clouds and the function that we are trying to minimize is a function that is called a rasterizing type of function that offers a, a lot of local minimizers with a global minimizer that is not that different from other local minimizers. And what happens? Happens that if we look at the estimated trajectory that this particle have been doing, it turns out to be precisely a straight line starting from the initial condition to the global minimizer. So this particle on average, they completely ignore the uh, complexity of the function that you want to optimize and they go right straight to the uh, global uh, global minimizer or the global optimum in other words individual agents on average they follow the gradient flow of the quadratic uh, distance uh, uh, from the from the global minimizer so they are simply following the straight line which is pretty uh, surprising, right? Okay, so this is exactly the first result that I would like to, to mention to you. It's uh, a result that we obtained the last uh, year. So we have a locally Lipschitz uh, uh, continuous function, so we don't need uh, E to be particularly smooth. In particular, we don't need uh, second order differentiability uh, or something uh, like uh, global Lipschitz uh, conditions or stuff like that. On the other hand, we need uh, this inverse continuity property, which means that the level of the energy is telling you how far you are from, from a global uh, minimum. So this is an important property because it's, everything is based on the evaluation of the function E. And then, for n large enough, so for the number of particles sufficiently large, the consensus based approximation is on average, on average, approximating the gradient flow of the quadratic uh, 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 or the quadratic distance. In other words, uh, somehow 
uh, independently of the non-convex profile of the function from which we started, this method, as soon as n goes to infinity, uh, perform a canonical convexification. So it's transforming the problem into a very, very simple quadratic, uh, quadratic uh, minimization. So something very simple, okay? It's a beautiful effect, which means also that there is some hidden magic in the process for n going to infinity to morally destroying uh, potential troubles of, uh, of the original problem. So if the original problem was an MP hard problem, as soon as n goes to infinity and you have a very, 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 very large number of particles, uh, basically you are, you are able to, to crack somehow this, this uh, uh, MP hardness and to be able to make it, the problem simpler, okay? But that's hidden a little bit in the, in the process of n going to infinity. Okay, why this algorithm is so, uh, uh, you can prove something, you can show that this method do converge globally. So whatever initial condition you, you have, uh, under these uh, assumptions, you will always confer, uh, converge to the global minimizer. Um, this comes with the following uh, uh, fact that the iterations that you saw before, they can be easily interpreted as a Euler Uh, we apologize we have we are having some uh, technical difficulty we will be back online in a few seconds please bear with us Please, uh, in the meantime, uh, prepare your questions uh, and you can ask them either on the YouTube chat or in person online at the end of the seminar. We have Massimo back with us, so I will leave the word to... Yeah, him. I have uh, some troubles. I hope that uh, it doesn't happen again. Okay. Okay. So I just ready drop. when you are. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about this. I hope that doesn't happen again. Okay. Can you see the full screen? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. It's, uh, it's yeah. Okay. So we. I was mentioning that the uh, the. 
the algorithm can be interpreted as a Euler Mayuruyama scheme uh, associated to a system of uh, stochastic differential equations, and that for the number of n of these uh, equations going to infinity, a mean field approximation apply. So it is possible to show that each of these particles start um, uh, start to um, to be approximated by a sort of monoparticle that fulfill a monoparticle approximation where the consensus point is now computed in a self-consistent manner as actually the law, uh, as dependent on the law of uh, this monoparticle system. So in other words, despite the fact that you have multiple particles, the expected behavior of, of these particles is the one of a monoparticle that solve a one single uh, differential, a stochastic differential equation. Now, uh, as I said, for n large, the mean behavior of the system then reads as the one of the monoparticle. And one can try to understand what is the, um, the, um, the behavior of this particle look like. So we, we differentiated this, the expected behavior. And what you can see is that expected behavior can be written as in a certain sense, a gradient flow of the quadratic distance to the global minimizer, uh, plus a possible uh, so the, 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 the deviation that the consensus point has from the uh, global uh, optimum that we are searching for. So except for this deviation, the, essentially, the dynamics of this monoparticle, of the expected value of this monoparticle, is the one of a simple gradient flow um, of the quadratic distance. So, um, in order to understand what happens to this deviation, one combines two principles. The first is the inverse continuity property that uh, we assume that the objective function uh, actually uh, actually uh, fulfill with uh, the so-called Laplace principle. That is basically the, the principle with which we are designing the consensus point. If we combine the two, then it's possible to prove that the consensus point essentially um, is consistently close to the global optimum, let's say. And because of that, uh, basically the dynamics become or it is uh, uh, morally, um, it is morally more and more somehow um, uh, 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 regarded as a gradient flow. So this is a morally what is going on. But in order to understand it a little bit more rigorously, uh, somehow one may want to take advantage of this uh, mean field limit and also of the monoparticle dynamics and see that the law of this monoparticle dynamics fulfill itself the partial differential equation. So if we uh, somehow test a function, a smooth function phi with respect to the monoparticle and we use it a formula, it turns out that uh, it's possible to show that by taking the expectations, the law of this uh, monoparticle dynamics has to fulfill a certain differential equation in a weak sense or he written here in the strong sense. And this uh, differential equation as a transport term um, of this uh, nonlinear transport, transport term of this type and is in a diffusion term that is vanishing in a certain sense. It is a vanishing diffusion term uh, that appears there. And so by using this differential equation, it's possible to try to understand what happens in the large particle limit and the way, uh, uh, so the formal result looks like that. So if we want to look at what is the expected uh, dynamics of the quadratic distance, uh, which means that we are trying to understand what is in time the behavior of this object, which is, if you want, a, a sort of um, um, uh, deviation from the global minimizer. 
it turns out that if you choose the parameters of the equation uh, in a suitable way or the parameters of the drift and the diffusion in a suitable way, it's possible to prove that um, this quantity uh, decay exponentially to zero, um, decay exponentially to zero um, in time, which means that the entire dynamics concentrate uh, very rapidly uh, towards the global minimizer, and uh, that's how it is. Um, it is um, uh, uh, um, uh, proven uh, proven somehow uh, in a formal way. Now the way. Uh, we analyze this uh, the behavior is simply by differentiating this term and by using uh, the weak form of the equation. So now we try to uh, pick phi in such a way that we uh, we have this uh, um, uh, uh, formulation, and then we we use uh, the uh, differential equation to analyze the behavior of uh, this term. And this is basically done like that. So we take phi as exactly the quadratic distance from the minimizer. And then we differentiate and we use the equation. And as you can see already on the right hand side, you see appearing uh, negative terms that allows you to uh, uh, already uh, foresee the uh, exponential decay. The only problem is that you have to control uh, the deviation from the consensus of the consensus point from the global um, um, uh, minimizer, and that's exactly somehow uh, an important task. Uh, I'm not getting into the details, but basically, um, all the uh, uh, difficulty of the proof is essentially showing that um, you can contain uh, this uh, error within uh, the uh, the deviation from the global minimizer. Uh, uh, in uh, for all the time. That's more or less what uh, what is uh, about. So what does it mean? It means that uh, with this uh, theorem, we can guarantee that whatever initial condition we have, we will be always able to converse to the to the global minimizer. Actually, with an exponential time. So it, it is very fast the convergence to the global minimizer. At least if you have sufficiently large number of particles. Now, you can use this method also for training neural networks. And here we did some experiments to understand whether this method is as good, at least as good as stochastic gradient descent um, uh, uh, in the sense of, of performing uh, generalization errors that are uh, sufficiently, uh, sufficiently um, somehow mm, sufficiently uh, satisfactory. And uh, here we wanted to test it on the classification with MNIST, which is a database of characters. And we use a couple of architectures of, uh, of neural networks, a shallow neural networks or uh, a convolutional neural networks. And we have been showing that if, if you use a, a convolutional neural networks and you train it by using consensus-based optimization in a very, very short time uh, during uh, a, a very short amount of epochs of training, uh, one can reach uh, uh, very quickly the 96, 97% of accuracy in the, in the, in the tests, um, uh, in the test cases. So it's pretty, pretty convincing that uh, co consensus-based optimization should be also considered uh, for uh, machine learning, um, not uh, simply uh, uh, focusing exclusively on, on gradient descent methods. OK, um, I want to also to mention that uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of optimization can be generalized to, um, to problems that do have constraints, and in particular, geometrical constraints. So here we have been uh, adapting uh, consensus-based optimization to work on compact hypersurfaces. So not only you have a non-convex optimization problem, but you're also living on a on a on a very complex uh, complex uh, uh, object that could be a a, a torus or or a sphere, and uh, and uh, and uh, and nevertheless, somehow you can rewrite um, the equations um, on the basis of the uh, global characterization of of the. Uh, compact hypersurface, for instance, by using the sine distance from the 
from the sine distance function from the uh, from the hypersurface and by using this tool you can write explicitly the equations uh, that a consensus based optimization should fulfill on on a on a curved on a surface that uh, that uh, that uh, on which the problem is is defined right now the principles are the same there is a drift to the consensus points there is a brownian motion on the on the surface there are some correction terms that are needed to ensure that the dynamics do not um, uh, do not move away from the surface this is coming from the second order terms that the eto formula typically um, generates but except for that all these terms are uh, very similar to the one that we already saw and as you see you can really optimize functions that uh, not only are complicated functions to be optimized but at the same time you can optimize them over a very complicated structure that have uh, say positive and negative curvatures and and all this stuff nevertheless somehow the method is able to to do the job and this was the case of the torus but you can do it also on the sphere so here uh, these are examples of uh, non-convex functions that uh, that live on the sphere this is the Ackley function with multiple local minimizer with a very pronounced uh, uh, global optimum but there is also these are the function where somehow all local minimizers and the global minimizers look quite uh, similar and nevertheless somehow the method is able to find the global minimizer uh, over the sphere anyway and of course, so with these methods that are geometrical, so leading on, on, on uh, spheres or, or other hypersurfaces, you can then solve other type of machine learning problems. For instance, if you have a, a cloud of points and you want to find the, um, the, uh, a sort of principal direction of these, uh, of these points, um, you want to uh, find a vector for which you minimize um, the projection of the points, the distance of the projections of the points over this uh, one-dimensional subspace. And uh, uh, the way you penalize, though, uh, this distance from the projection may depend on a parameter p. And what we know is that for p equal to 2, this problem is equivalent to find the so-called first, uh, uh, first singular vector of the cloud of points or somehow the principal component of the cloud of points. But for p less than 2, the problem become uh, significantly more difficult and highly non-convex. Uh, and the minimization of this function uh, cannot be done by, by using, for instance, a gradient descent, simply because it is exhibiting a lot of local minimizers. And, and it won't work very easily with a gradient descent. But nevertheless, you can you can use it, uh, for instance, to find the so-called eigenphase or the phase that fits best all the phases. And you can use p less than one or p uh, very small precisely to be able to filter out a certain kind of uh, outliers. So if you are very far from the rest of the point cloud, you you don't want to wait this particular datum in order to compute the eigenphase too much and you want to filter it out by using the non-convexity of the of this function right and if you do so and you can use a consensus based optimization you are able right to filter quite well the uh, the points uh, that uh, the, and to find good global uh, uh, minimizers while using a classical svd a singular value decomposition won't give it won't give you the right uh, the right result Okay, this is all about uh, consensus-based optimization, some of the results that we obtained, uh, the formulation of it on, on uh, geometrical uh, uh, constraints, and, uh, and some applications that we see so in uh, machine learning. So with this, I, I thank you very much for the attention. I'm sorry for the interruption due to technical uh, problems, and I remain now at your disposal for uh, possible questions. Thank you, Massimo, for the very interesting seminar. And now we have uh, some questions for you. Uh, some questions from Jean-Francois Mascari. The first is, um, do quantum algorithms 
exist for consensus based optimization. Can you, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Can yes. I... Do quantum algorithms exist for consensus based optimization? Because quantum annealing already exists. Well, I'm not aware about it. I don't think so because uh, a consensus based optimization has been started very recently and uh, we have uh, had the first proofs of convergence uh, of implementations uh, over over somehow digital and uh, and uh, somehow known quantum uh, uh, systems um, uh, and I, I don't think that there is anything related to that on on uh, on quantum uh, quantum uh, 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 somehow architectures no as far as I know there's nothing like that okay now the second question any relation between the topology geometry of the constraints and the complexity of the optimization algorithm well um what we uh, what we uh, know so far is that um uh, somehow local local convergence to global minimizers should not be a big problem if the uh, curvature of the of the of the surface is 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 uh is bounded we don't have yet a proof of global convergence to global minimizers so we do have a proofs of global convergence to global minimizers on the flat, which is the first result that I presented. We do have uh, proofs of local convergence to global minimizers on hypersurfaces, but we don't have yet global, global convergence uh, to global minimizers on, uh, on, uh, on hypersurfaces. Um, and, uh, and this is due to the geometrical of the fact that one has to understand the manifold in a global sense and in order to really to, to describe the dynamics globally and, and try to uh, prove the contractivity over the, uh, the entire body in a certain sense. This is something that we have not been able to do yet. Uh, it doesn't mean that we, are, we will not be able to do it soon. Um, uh, but from a, uh, from, a, uh, from a technical point of view, from a um, practical point of view, if you have a compact uh, uh, manifold, what we observe is that the, uh, the, uh, the convergence is exponential. So it seems that also in this case, um, somehow the, 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 um, the fact that you have different, um, uh, uh, um, uh, e even different uh, uh, um, uh, curvatures on the same surfaces does not change the fact that globally you tend to converge uh, exponentially fast to the global minimizer. So it seems that at least on, on compact uh, manifolds that's what we observed uh, in the experiments. Okay. And now there is a Lorenzo with us with some questions for you. Well, well just, no, I wanted really just to say a lot to, to Massimo, not, <laughs> not having any questions, but maybe I can give that even if it was not what I was thinking, a, a, a small uh, contribution concerning uh, the, the question uh, on the quantum computing. Uh, because uh, uh, we started a little bit to work on that. And um, one uh, line of research is uh, that uh, there are um, quantum algorithms for uh, particle storm optimization. And uh, particle storm optimization is somehow related to consensus-based optimization in the sense that we have shown that it can be, you know, consensus-based optimization can be derived from a continuous version of particle storm optimization. So following that line of uh, research, uh, I think that eventually one can imagine to adapt uh, or to modify existing quantum algorithms to the case of uh, consensus-based optimization. Um, I don't hear you, Italia, you're muted. Have you some comments about uh, Lorenzo? 
no, 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 nothing particular. <laughs> okay. Then uh, we have in chat another questions. What is the alpha parameter in the exponential of the consensus function tuning? So the <clears throat> it allows to describe um, so it allows to describe the um, to have a, a sort of um, uh, expression for the global minimizer that depend on the law of the particles. So without uh, that uh, description, uh, uh, somehow it's it's difficult to uh, to um, to represent uh, um, somehow to, to, to show that uh, th this consensus point do converge to the global minimizer, um, uh, you need to describe it really as an integral respect to the law of the particles. And, um, and uh, the Laplace principle uh, allows you to say that uh, you can approximate uh, global minimizers uh, of functions precisely using that uh, uh, inverse exponential. So you have the exponential of e to the minus alpha times the objective function. And then you can, uh, you can consider a sort of center of mass with respect to this weight. And then one can prove that for alpha going to infinity, this object uh, um, do converge always to, the, to a, global, um, a global minimizer of the function. So, um, it's it's uh, it, it, it tunes this parameter alpha tunes uh, in a certain sense uh, how close you want to be to the instantaneous local minimizer uh, 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 the instantaneous minimizer of the particles and um, yeah it has a function to allow you also to prove that you converge to the global minimizer so it's it's uh, it's a it's a, we have recently found some interpretation that uh, it's, it's difficult now to 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 show you uh, to the to discuss because it's still preliminary but what we can prove is that the dynamics of the consensus point is very much a gradient dynamics so the consensus point follow a gradient flow uh, with respect to the objective function it does not follow the gradient flow exactly and this depends on alpha so it is better than the gradient flow because the gradient flow would allow you to get stuck on local minimizers, right? So that's what happened with the gradient flow. But what happens is that V alpha is morally following gradient flow, but not precisely. And for alpha going to infinity, you will follow exactly the gradient flow. But for alpha not going to infinity, you are something different. And this allows you to escape actually local minimizers. That's uh, another view about this parameter alpha that you may want to think about. And now another question from Nicola Bologna. What about optimizing over Puglia? Well, somehow there are some uh, uh, new work done by, by Lorenzo Pareschi uh, that uh, is based on the idea of uh, simply imposing uh, constraints by using penalization, right? So you can uh, try to create uh, penalties uh, that you exalt during the iterations. So you start with uh, relatively weak constraints and then you increase the penalty during the iterations. And um, it seems that this technique of increasing penalization during the, uh, during the dynamics allows you to solve the problem uh, with constraints in many, many situations. So I think that uh, this is one way to approach, uh, uh, to approach the, the, the uh, somehow more general constraints that are not necessarily globally described by equations. Um, and so I think that one could also do that on polyedra as soon as you have a way to, uh, to penalize the fact that you are not on the polyedra. So if you can describe, for instance, a, a distance function from the polyedra, then, then you can design an optimization of this type that can, can, can solve uh, the problem on the constraints. Yeah. And now we have Giovanni Naldi with us. Hi, yes. Giovanni. Hi, and uh, hi, Massimo. And hi, uh, I have two curiosities, sorry. The first one is uh, in the application of neural networks, 
uh, it's possible to formally verify your main hypothesis. That is to say, the control or difference of the, the star with an energy, because uh, I don't clear, <laughs> really, it's not clear for me. It's possible to uh, uh, verify this hypothesis in the application neural networks, machine learning. And it uh, seems it's a very important hypothesis, the control of V minus V star uh, with uh, the energy. The second question is, uh, oh, okay, this is uh, the first question. Uh, yeah, so that is something that uh, um, I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, there are a lot of studies done on, on understanding the the uh, the landscape of the so-called uh, of so-called um, uh, 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 somehow uh, um, um, loss functions, right? The, these are the loss functions that the people are using in in uh, in, uh, in uh, training neural networks, and they try to understand how how they look like around global uh, minimizers. And there are some studies that show that uh, somehow there might be areas of flatness. Um, around global minimizers um, that uh, would uh, somehow prevent uh, that uh, condition to be a precisely true, right? Because if you are flat and 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 you cannot estimate anymore the distance uh, from the global minimizer, this is something that uh, can happen. So in the, in the practice, in the real life, in the uh, in in some of these applications in machine learning, it might happen that the condition is not precisely fulfilled, but at least uh, fulfilled in in uh, in a neighborhood of 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 the certain flat areas or, or stuff like that. So I know that there is a lot of studies of of this kind, but we did not. Uh, um, somehow got got deeper into that or discussed that in uh, in uh, in the particular application. We simply tested the algorithm to see the empirical performance. Uh, also, a little bit to convince uh, some of the skeptics uh, that uh, not only gradient descent can be used, or uh, somehow that uh, um, gradient descent may not be used all the time only, um, but that one can explore other methods as well. And from a theoretical point of view, the last question is, uh, it's possible to consider, in some sense, uh, your theoretical uh, uh, results as a liapun of functionals on the trajectories, and uh, it's possible yeah. to be okay so in the, this sense. The, the theoretical, uh, so what, what we proved is morally, the functional, which is the quadratic, the quadratic distance from the global minimizer, uh, integrated with respect to the law of the particles, this functional um, somehow um, follow a gradient. Uh, this, uh, a, so the, the dynamics is the gradient descent. It is the gradient flow of this uh, uh, particular uh, energy, and so it's a liapun of functional. Certainly, um, in my view, it's it's a little bit more than that. It's nearly the uh, the dynamics is behaving although it is not uh, is behaving like a gradient uh, f uh, gradient flow for that energy thank you bye okay thank you massimo i don't know if there are some other comments or no people uh, say thanks uh, to your answer uh, then there is uh, just a comment on jean francois that uh, refers to what you said before about the cohomology that could be used. Very interesting, the thanks. Okay. No, there are no, no other questions, Massimo. So we thank you again. And uh, we see, uh, we tell you bye bye. And we remember that uh, see you on next uh, Wednesday when uh, we have. Uh, uh, Dr. Donato Bini of our, in our uh, IAC seminars and in two weeks with Carola Bibian Sherlip for the next seminar of the IMA series. Bye-bye, everybody, and thank you again, Massimo.